All right. So, I'm gonna ask you your name again. What was your name one more time? Nina Wilson. And <coughs> you're considered to be uh, one of the founders of Idle No More. Yes. And I guess what? Why? Well, guess what? What do they mean by founders? Like why was that word chosen over like leaders or anything like that? Because uh, we don't really have leaders. I think everybody has uh, uh, the sense and the whatever it takes internally to navigate themselves in the ways that they need to to do this kind of work. And what's the work that, that you're all doing? Well, what we're trying to do is to... Uh, well, there's several things that we're doing. So it's not just... Uh, it's not just one thing, and it hasn't just stayed the same. It's kind of maneuvered here and there, going as we go. And uh, the main thing is to uh, defend and protect the land and the water, and our indigenous rights and the fundamental rights of all human beings. And so this, if I understand correctly, I don't know more. I started with a, with a teaching. It started with uh, there's four of us, and. Um, we had already been um, concerned about land and water issues and social issues, I guess, and some of the devastation that we see and the poverty and living conditions. All of us had been concerned about those types of things, and um, it, it seemed to be getting worse. It didn't seem to be getting any better as time went on, and um, we met on social media. <coughs> And um, personally, we met, Sylvia and I met first, and uh, we talked about the beauty of the places where we come from, and how we felt about that, um, what's going on in each territory. Um, there's different things going on, but it's basically the same. It's like um, our lands and waters are being uh, compromised deeply. And that really bothers us because um, as mothers and grandmothers we have uh, to think about the generations coming and how that will affect them. So we met first and we talked about um, how we could strategize in, uh, um, I guess, developing something together where we could stand up and, and do something. And, and the name I don't know more was coined by um, Jessica Gordon, who's one of the founders too. She um, came up with the name not to disrespect any activists or any um, spiritual people who had already been working really hard to defend and protect. But it was more or less about us being idle and what could we do. Um, so we decided to take action, and that first action was uh, um, having those rallies. The first five being in Saskatchewan. <coughs> then they moved into Alberta. And then they moved into Manitoba, where I'm staying right now, to go to school. So that's kind of how it began. And we did talk about a court case that uh, would flex our treaty muscle, basically, that would... Um, it talks about um, the sun, sundown case, R versus sundown. <coughs> and essentially what that is, is a, an a older man from Alberta used that sundown case to, um, he, he basically created the sundown case. He popped a hunting cabin in uh, the path of the pipeline and on Crown land and he stopped all the exploitation efforts there. So seeing that, we thought we could do something like that, strategize across all the areas where <coughs> the pipelines were and on our crown lands and on our reserves, and um, hopefully slow it down enough to develop some more intense education about the health risks and the devastation to the land, like the long-term implications, um, because we felt that that wasn't really being shown out there or if it was, it wasn't um, grabbing people enough. And we already knew that there was lots of people getting sick from um, resource extraction. So we, we tried to do that, and it was uh, something that we contacted the David Suzuki Foundation about. And they were interested, 
we were very interested in, in, in hearing how we were um, planning. But then uh, we caught wind of um, Bill C-45 and Jessica Gordon, Sheila McLean and Sylvia and myself. We, we, we didn't really know what, th what that was and when we found out what when we started to find out what, what it was, it was um, it was pretty disturbing because it looked at um, removing our people's um, right to hold land designation, removing us from that, and basically opening up the lands for basically anyone to come in and do whatever they want. We were worried about the resource companies coming in, um, and I guess that's one of the reasons why we were worried about Bill C-45. And also, um, it took away protection for water. And in Canada, we have millions of waterways, um, not just above ground, but aquifers under the ground. And, um, I'm not a politician or a scientist or anything like that, but I took a chance in just trying to teach myself about these bills. Some of them are they're so complicated and they're huge and even combing through them with the level of education I have, I've missed things so it was good that there was a collective of people that were looking through these um, documents to help us catch things that we were missing and to throw things out that we needed to look at deeper so that's kind of how that started when we talked about um <coughs> <coughs> I'll, I'll know more. It's spread out from that beginning, right? Right now, you're you're in the United States, like you're here at the uh, Red Lake. Or, uh, we love our land encampment or Enbridge blockade. As many names, but uh, you're, now you're here. And I guess what it was, where are you at right now? Like, why are you traveling right now? We came for the symposium that was held in uh, Minneapolis, and that had to do with treaty and water and uh, land defense and. Uh, <coughs> I guess uh, environmental specialists were there and legal specialists and we got a chance to listen to uh, some really good um, information sessions on how um, things that you don't wouldn't normally find in because it changes so quickly the information that we need always has to be um, continually worked on because it's always growing and moving so that was a, a I could start and I was invited there by uh, Patricia Shepard and she, um, I, I knew her from Facebook as well and um, that's how I ended up in Minneapolis. Um, you said that there's a, there's a facet, like how important do you think education is? <coughs> it seems to be underlying everything, or uh, at least what you've been speaking about. The education is critical because um, the education that our people receive and all people receive are um, not based on truth. They're not based on, um, or, or it's twisted in a way that um, <coughs> there's important things being left out. And education, if you've been following what's been going on in Canada, um, we just recently um, had some uh, documentation on the residential school era and uh, how devastating that was for our people back home and how it um, looks at the whole education system that we need to take more control of and we need to be more, um, I guess, going out there and making connections with people that have the appropriate information and that have the heart to do this because uh, this is hard. A lot of people uh, turn on you and sometimes it's hard to trust but when you believe in the creator and you believe in um, the reason why we are alive then there's no other alternative we have to do this and what's you say we have to do this like what do you have to do <coughs> what well it's funny because um, there's no real organization to I don't know it's kind of um, and it's not that it's unorganized, it's just, it's not your average hierarchy, and it's not your average organization system. We're going out there to make the connections with the people who love the land, so who are concerned for the water, and um, the beings, and not just uh, humans, but 
but all that need to survive. So that leads you in those directions. You meet people that you wouldn't necessarily meet. You find people that have those uh, those gifts or those skills in lots of unlikely places. Um, it's shaken people to the core because it, it's created a whole atmosphere of do we know who we are? Who are we? we you know, what do we stand for? What will we allow? And so there's a... Um, I hear a lot, um, I don't know more, of the idea of the grassroots. That's kind of what you're speaking about, the grassroots, organizing the grassroots. I guess what, what's the difference between organizing the grassroots and not organizing the grassroots? <coughs> or, or why? I think that... Um, our people have had everything stolen from them, everything, and um, we're doing the best we can with what little we have left, and we feel very strongly that each person has their own, uh, their own way to articulate things in their own input, and to take ownership of that, because that really wakes someone up, like it's woken me up and it's woken up other people to take ownership of it and to also uh, figure out where do they fit into this and how do they see that connection to our identity as Cree, Lakota, 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 Mishnah, whoever we are. Um, what does that say about what we know about who we are? So it has shaken up people because it's made them realize that a lot of things we thought were important maybe weren't so important or the things that we always did the status quo was just interrupted big time and it's made people interact differently our people have never really had that voice so um, well not all the time I mean back home for, for us I don't mean other people who have been doing this a long time. I'm a greenhorn. I'm not a seasoned um, activist or anything like that. But I love the land and I love the people. And I have a responsibility and to use my voice and to not stay silent mm. because if you're silent, that is your consent. And people can do anything they want to you if you don't say anything about the things you think are wrong. more questions. Uh, um, <coughs> so also, so this, uh, I, I consider uh, I don't know more like the indigenous rights movement, you know, but there's also, uh, you're, you're, you're in this moment, I think it's called the Solidarity Spring, but uh, are you finding a lot of allies outside of what I guess people would consider the indigenous rights movement? Like uh, what are the intersections with the environmental movement and like what allies are you finding, I guess, if, if any? Um, we have quite a few allies, and forgive me, I'm not on in the chats as much when I'm outside. And if you know how Facebook works when you're working on things like this, three hours could mean a month, or 12 hours away from it could mean quite a, like a lot of things could change within those 12 hours. So I think our allies are um, unions and lots of educators, artists, uh, settler people, all kinds of settler people other activists. I think we all need water. We all need safe, clean drinking water. We all need freedom from toxicity in the land. So that kind of is the common the common ground that we have. Um one more So what I guess clarify that <coughs> I don't know more is resisting the two pipelines that are going out east and west, correct? And then, I guess, what's the stance on the KXL pipeline, which is heading south? Pardon me? Uh, so, well, the, uh, irrelevant question. I guess, what, what, what is the Solidarity sp Spring? Like, it's, it's you know... Well, we're, we're in support of the people that want to protect and defend the land. It's more than just, we want more money more than that. 
and it's not that we oppose those things, it's just that when you get to the heart of why you defend and protect, that is not a primary focus. The focus is on defending and protecting the land and the rights of people that are directly connected to that. So um, that's part of the Solidarity Spring. There's going to be a lot of action taking place, um, trying to go to support people, like coming here to support, um, to show support um, for the people and the, the issues that are happening here. Even though I don't know everything about it, you know, I'm just, uh, I think that's what we're working on. And to show other people to, to not be afraid, because there's a lot of fear going on right now. There's a lot of fear and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that can stop you. So if we're going to be saying these things, then we need to do these things. They have to go together. The action and the talk. And so near the Embers blockade just to support, to show support? To show support and to learn more and to be, uh, to be, um, I guess in that support to see what what can we do. You know, there's a there's a power in collectivity. There's a power in numbers, and uh, I think the issues that are here are the, some of the issues we have back home, and not just here, but in other countries where Indigenous people are being uh, killed, basically killed and hurt, harmed because of um, exploitation, and I think that the world has created this division where we're not connected, we're all apart from one another, but we have to come to realize that no, we're not. We're all being affected by this, and so how can we become more educated about what's happening here and how will it affect other people elsewhere? Because then that draws in more um, support from the people who can uh, start speaking up and start doing actions that will I guess prevent more damage, more damages. And then, I guess, so <coughs> you, you mentioned that there's, you have a, a whole swath of allies and like, I, I was down in the, the Tar Sands blockade in Texas, working with them, and I've been to a lot of like different <coughs> places where there's all these people who are working sort of on the same issues, defending the land, and, and I guess if you could speak to these people and just tell them one sort of like final last statement that you just wanted to take with them, what would that be? I would say, um, don't give up. Don't give up and, um, we love you for defending and protecting. And even when things don't seem like they're getting anywhere, they are. It just isn't always seen right away. So just to keep, keep at it keep going, don't give up, and keep your, um, keep your hum humanness, don't lose that in all of this, because it can happen, take care of yourself, this is hard, it's hard, um, look after each other, look out for one another, we have to do that. All right, so always relax. <laughs> right, thank you so much. That's getting in time off. Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. So we're working on um. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Well, there, there's a that last question because we're we're asking that question of a lot of people who are in this fight, and we're gonna try to put together a video of all these people talking to each other. Oh, this, you know what? This is so awesome because we were just talking about this because we go in spurts of. Oh my gosh. You know, it gets, the urgency gets yeah. to you sometimes, and you just kind of freak out for a while, and we were talking about it behind the scenes, about, we need to get this, we need to get videos out, we need to do this, and we need to do that, and there's so many things we need to do, but it's good to see that. And it's always, that. like, uh, the idea of, like, collective thought, I think, is always great, because it's, you'll, you'll be sitting there, like, oh, this is such a great idea, like, I, I really hope to, you know, I work on this, blah, 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 and then you'll talk to somebody, and they're already working on it, yeah. because if it's a good idea, people are going to yeah. realize it, you know? And then, uh, yeah. That was cool that you said don't lose your humanist and just think, think about, you said think that you're not getting anywhere, but you are getting somewhere, actually you're raising awareness amongst everybody and all the people, and it's not just about 
about this one area worldwide. Yep. It's worldwide. It's a global issue. I think that's really important too, Leah. <laughs> like take care of yourself and take care of each other because people get just caught up in what's happening so much they forget that their lives and yeah. themselves. And I was involved in like uh, the early stages of Occupy Wall Street and that happened to a lot of people where they threw themselves so hard into the work that they forgot that they were human. Yeah. You know? I had a, a guy tell me, he's like, he's like, you need to get out of this office. There's rivers. There's <laughs> <laughs> Don't remember what you're fighting for. You that know? sounds like my sister. She's always like, hello. Go for a walk outside. <laughs>